shut up and sit down. Greetings guys, this is Andy from Big Mac's Workshop and Painting Studio and I am painting a Age of Sigma Gaunt Summer. I'm going to start off with a bit of airbrush work which is going to be In's Mouth Green from Scale 75 and I'm throwing that all over his robe because I'm doing something a little bit different um, to the standard stock photos what you see. I'm not going for a classic blue Zinchian look. I'm going for a bit more green, a bit more interesting, a bit more vibrant sort of um, palette. Um, trying to uh, make things a little bit different for you guys. So the next layer is Despair Green and it's just a uh, nice 45 degree angle uh, with the airbrush. Despair Green is at scale 75 as well. Now this can all be done uh, by hand. Uh, it's just a lot easier, a lot more um, efficient uh, with an airbrush. So if you don't have this uh, sort of um, tool at your disposal, uh, it's totally doable um, with a um, paintbrush. Uh, it just takes a little bit longer. So once the uh, despair green is down, I'm now going with Caribbean blue and pushing from a slightly higher than 45 degree angle now and I'm um, brightening up those uh, top layers uh, getting some real vibrant contrast in there and I'm uh, just making the uh, model look, uh, start to look really interesting from a, a perspective of the robes. Now once I've got the Despair Green, uh, sorry the Caribbean Blue down, I'm going back in with uh, Despair Green to add a bit of depth to the brighter areas uh, just to uh, bring it back down to something like the uh, original colour. I'm just going to be uh, doing that um, a little bit a few times, just lifting it up and taking it back down again uh, just to make that um, uh, blend really really interesting and get a really cool colour transition. So next is Caribbean Blue from Scale 75 and um, Vallejo's model colour range, uh, Green Grey. I'm just throwing that onto the upper uh, reaches of the, of the robes where the uh, lights are going to hit um, of the most prominent areas. Uh, I'm just take, be, being ever so careful, I don't want to um, overspray too much into the um, recessed areas. Just try and make sure that the um, colours extra interesting. And now that I've added even more green grain to the uh, mix, I'm throwing it from a really high angle now, real almost 90 degrees, and just focusing on the extreme edges of the um, of the robes, just to really pick out those bright bright areas. So the next is a mixed uh, mixture of. Uh, Coelia green seed, um, four drops of that, and two drops of thin, and two, uh, one drop of flow aid, and one, two drops of lamia. I'm just throwing a mix here to uh, try and get a really interesting wash. And I found that it, uh, although it takes a long time to dry, it really does um, act as a very good wash with uh, the extra chemicals in there just to um, make it run really, really nicely. And I've just um, Throw a little bit of a uh, dark tone in there as well, just to um, add a little bit of uh, depth to the wash. So when it gets into real deep areas, um, I'm throwing out a slightly darker one in there. And it just allows you to uh, really add some depth to the model itself. So it was an interesting experiment for me to um, throw around different chemicals into the uh, washers, just to see how they interact with each other. So now I'm throw, uh, throwing some Cadian uh, wash, so from here on in there's a, at least a drop of flow aid in all the different um, paints I'm adding on by hand. Now this uh, essentially is a drying retarder, uh, so it takes a lot longer to um, for the model to dry, so uh, it takes a, uh, a lot longer than intended to uh, paint, but I did start to get the right mixture uh, in there, so I get a better um, coat eventually and a, a quicker drying time. So there you are, got some Cadian on the uh, on the flesh. Now it's not going to stay like that because I'm doing something a little bit different. Uh, but next is a Brass Scorpion and I'm going on uh, the sort of ears of the uh, helmet uh, and uh, the shoulder plates of some, some of the sections of his armour. I'm putting a, a few different colours of armour on just to keep it interesting. I don't want a uh, 
armor plates to look too similar. Got a few different uh, colored materials in there just to make it uh, a bit more interesting. So a couple of layers of brass scorpion onto the first sections of metal. Uh, and um, then we get a nice solid coat. Then it's uh, gain ink um, violet. Again, thin down uh, with some flow aid and whacked all over the flesh. Uh, and this gives you a really interesting sort of blue effect. So what I wanted was a sort of a bluey skin with a, an undertone of a, sort of a natural flesh colour. I'm also throwing the violet onto the um, brass as well, um, as the uh, purple gives a really rich um, tone to the metalwork. Another layer of brass scorpion over over top, just to tidy everything up and get um, that clean uh, metalwork that you need, uh, just with the uh, brass, sorry, the violet, uh, picking out the detail work just to make it look a bit more interesting. I'm just tidying everything up now. Um, this is a uh, only one drop of uh, flow aid. I start finding that um, no more than one drop of flow aid, and you get a nice um, sort of a middle ground between uh, drying time and um, movement with the paint. So next is Leandris Grey by Scale Seventy Five, uh, used as a first highlight for um, the uh, skin work. And it's kind of a purpley colour. And I'm um, just throwing it all over there just to get the um, model looking something like what I'm actually attempting to get to. Next is Leandris Grey and uh, Cadian uh, Flesh Tone. And I'm starting to add this to the highlighted areas just to make the, um, the pronounced areas start to pop and make it a, a lot more of an interesting colour scheme. And the next layer is a combination of Leander's Grey and Harvest of Flesh, which is still very much on the purple spectrum. These are both scale 75 at this point. Uh, I'm using different ranges here. Um, so I do apologize for saying the uh, brand for every different type, as uh, I'm using four or five different uh, ranges of paints uh, for any different areas. So unfortunately, uh, I'm going to have to uh, explain what, what paint it is. The next layer is Leander's Grey with the Harvester and then added a touch of Moon Rain Flesh. And Moon Rain Flesh is probably the equivalent of um, maybe Screaming Skull, that sort of area, sort of almost a bony colour. And what you get is a sort of a very purple undertoned and um, pale pallid sort of skin. Uh, skin where you could use this on um, sort of Nurgle uh, the rot sort of sections of the undertone of the um, uh, rotten flesh etc as well. That's uh, something interesting that I'm um, playing around with there. I uh, just added a touch more Moonray flesh in there and just to uh, brine it up and just fi finally getting the uh, highlights um, on the model. And it took a long time obviously because I started off painting, putting too much um, paint retarder in there. But once I start getting the uh, mix right, it starts to sell for, uh, much more um, efficiently. I'm now painting in some um, violet ink again. I'm just trying to keep the uh, sections to the um, most deep recesses uh, to add a little bit of depth to the skin. So as you can see, I've just uh, thrown some black paint onto the eyes as well, just to give me a bit of definition as to where they are. So onto the metalwork again, the Sycorax Bronze for the first highlight on the um, uh, the current uh, armor plates. Uh, just to, um, it's a it's a nice colour to go over the top of any of the brass or gold colours. It really does um, lift the colour without changing it too much. Uh, so it's uh, worth using for that sort of thing. The next is Vallejo's um, Metallic um, Air Bright Brass. Uh, the metallic Air are really good paints, you don't, uh, they really do well, uh, take um, thinning down well, so definitely worth using them. And this is done on the um, grey sections of the metal work, starting to bring them highlights together and make it really stand out, make it look, uh, um, start to look interesting. 
Now I've added a, a couple of drops of uh, chrome into it now, just for the final highlights on this section. Keeping it extra thin, but as you can see I've just uh, a nice big uh, highlight on that. I wanted it to look like it's catching the light from um, pretty much all areas. Uh, it's age of Sigma, so ten uh, rules tend to be a little bit more flexible as uh, uh, planets are often a little bit weird. And then over the top of all the highlights, etc., is Agrax Earthshade, uh, just to tone everything together uh, before I start putting the final layers of highlights on that. So, throwing some Agrax Earthshade into it, um, on, onto the model just to uh, tidy it up, and then back to Psychorax and Chrome uh, just to finish off those highlights and make it look extra bright and shiny. So I'm going on to the second uh, sections of the armour once I've uh, got a final highlight of uh, chrome just along the edges. So I'm running my uh, paintbrush really really lightly against the edges just to um, make them pick out a little bit. And that is just pure chrome. I'm also using it on the trim as well just to take the, um, the trim away from the generic metal colour. And this just um, spreads it out a little bit. So the next layer is Hammered Copper by um, Vallejo's Game Colour, uh, which is uh, probably on the same sort of level as uh, Ash of Copper or Genna's Gold even. These are sort of uh, very um, ready golds um, and it gives you a much darker um, baseline than the Brass Scorpion. Uh, so you get subtly different, once you've added all the highlights you get subtly different um, colours to the areas. The next layer is Runelord Brass uh, by g -Dub. Um, this is just a great colour for uh, highlighting. Uh, I find it, it's very thin so uh, you, you, you can use it um, you can get quite a few layers out on it uh, before it starts to uh, show up so just be careful um, of what you do, it, what you're using it for. So the next layer is uh, everyone's favourite Agrax Earthshade again. I'm throwing that all over the um, room or brass sections um, just to get them uh, shades in there. Really make the um, armour start to look interesting. So we don't want uh, a flat looking armour. We want it looking really, really colourful. Uh, even if it is just metallic work. So once I've uh, had the Agrax dry, it's a mix of um, that's just Psychorax at the minute. Throwing that onto the upper reaches. Now this guy's got three arms, which is weird in itself. <clears throat> so uh, I did find myself forgetting to paint the extra arm. So also remember that the extra shadows coming from uh, set arms. Uh, will apply, uh, which is quite a weird experience. I've never painted a, any kind of mutant before, so that was kind of uh, odd for me. And then I mixed some uh, Psychorax with Chrome for the, f uh, for the uh, first section of the upper highlights, keeping inside the um, sections of areas where it's been um, Psychorax before. Uh, and it gives you a nice sort of um, uh, blending into the model itself. Finally, uh, going back uh, around all the edges of the uh, trim with pure chrome, just to get that um, the, the uh, trim work to stand out against the rest of the armor. So next is the feathers. Now we're looking at some of the um, pictures on the on the internet, and they tend to go for really colourful uh, feathers. I went for a more colourful um, robe, so I decided to go for um, a single colour on this, which is Bloodfest Crimson by Scale 75. Um, any kind of p deep purple uh, would work for this, as it's just a, a base layer. Uh, just get a couple of layers on there, and you've got a nice uh, red purple colour uh, to the um, feathers. I've also done the same on the uh, staff head as well. 
So what I'm doing here is I'm just throwing a little bit of um, thin down violet into the uh, flesh just to add some more depth to it. I've also added that onto the uh, feathers as well just to throw a little bit of uh, depth into the uh, feather work and allow me to highlight it a little bit easier at a later date. So onto the uh, feathers again, it's Warlock Purple uh, by Game, no, by, um, Game, Game Color, yeah. and uh, a mix of that with uh, the Bloodfest Crimson. And it's about 50-50 at this point, I'm just using it to uh, add purple to the feathers. So the Bloodfest was a nice base liner, but I wanted a much brighter colour on, on there. But once that um, settled, I started to uh, aim towards the edges of the feathers with Warlock Purple. Now this is um, only Warlock at this point, obviously thinned down again. Uh, and I'm making sure that the paint towards the stem of the uh, feathers are kept Bloodfest, but the purple is sort of uh, quite obvious towards the outer edges. Now at this point I'm starting to use a really thin brush now uh, so I can start picking out the detail work uh, with the uh, with the colour as once it's uh, had a caribou crimson wash um, or two settled on it I then add uh, some uh, caribou crimson onto the staff head as well but the staff's not going to stay like that. I've got an I had an idea uh, at uh, this point about what to work on the staff, and I uh, decided to do some airbrush work on the staff itself as well. So onto the uh, feathers again. Now, as you can see, I'm um, angling the brush away from myself, so it's I'm actually using the f uh, the texture of the feathers and making the feathers look like they've got texture on it. And this is a mix of warlock. Uh, purple and squid pink. Um, any bright pinky purple colours from uh, any of the ranges, what you can see, will do this equally well. And it's just using really, really bright, uh, vibrant colours to um, feather towards the edges, and this gives you a really cool sort of feathery effect on the model. Next is Caribou Crimson. Uh, sorry, squid pink, pure squid pink at this point, and I'm using my thinnest brush. Uh, just to really make those details pronounced so you get the a sort of feathery look on them uh, to make it uh, it makes the model look a bit more interesting like a little bit more effort's gone into uh, to the edges of the uh, uh, feathers to make it look uh, that bit cooler another caribou crimson onto the uh, feathers as well just to pull it all together make sure that um, there's no stark contrast everywhere, it's just, everything sort of blends in. So this is uh, Vallejo's Game Air Earth. A couple of thin layers on this, it's just, I'm just going for a very very simple sort of papery look for the um, uh, magic tone. Um, there's a lot going on with this model so I didn't want to uh, add too much detail to it. Uh, so it's just a couple of thin layers of that, uh, just to get a nice, even baseline to it. So this is Elf Flesh, uh, Elf Skin by Vallejo's, uh, just to get into the eye sockets. Um, as I wanted to go for yellow eyes, but obviously yellow doesn't go over black particularly well. So I use a skin tone first, just to uh, give me something to work with. And Vallejo's golden yellow is the colour I decided to go for the eyes, which is similar to the uh, standard um, stock photos, uh, just to make it look a bit more alien. Not that it looks human as it is anyway, but I wanted a, a really weird um, eye colour to make it look that bit more interesting. And so yellow seems to work really well with the purples uh, and stand out quite nicely as well. So onto the uh, books again. Um, initially, I went with a really thin layer of Carrack stone. I'm just uh, building up the standard uh, GW bone colours onto the paperwork. 
as uh, it does really work well for paper um, any kind any kind of purity seals uh, paper that sort of thing um, the GW bone triclers are quite good at that after that it's uh, up Shabti bone um, again picking out the details I've also done the same on his uh, the remaining sections of his armor um, I decided that I wanted to stay away from metallic work and uh, it would have been a little bit too much so I went for a bone armor as well um, and that really does uh, stand out nicely against the uh, metal work around the rest of his uh, torso area so now it is screaming skull um, towards the upper section and now as you can see I've got a very very thin uh, layer of agrax earth shade onto the uh, um, bone armor um, it's really heavily watered down and uh, this is just to uh, add a little bit of depth to the model uh, as I wanted to um, be able to work with the uh, natural contours of it without um, obscuring too much detail so I'll do the same again with the uh, extra thin agrax uh, but I'll put a, a second layer of it as well uh, just to uh, pick out the detail a little bit more um, and just sort of builds up that uh, colour um, really really nicely uh, you get a nice uh, if you start putting fit multiple thin layers of washes as well as the um, standard paintwork you do get a really good colour transition because you can control where it's going uh, much better so here we are, I'm messing around with the uh, staff at this point I'm going for a bright yellow to purple so, um, uh, contour, uh, sorry, contour color change. Uh, and it looks really, really interesting once it's done. So I'm just using golden yellow, um, another minute, through the airbrush. Again, this can be done by hand. It's just so much easier with an airbrush. You, you wouldn't believe it. Um, obviously, you don't need to um, do too many layers with it you can just uh, keep building up them colors nice and easy without having to uh, glaze so much next is a uh, icy, ye uh, ice yellow um, which is just uh, a really really very light um, colored yellow and just aiming that towards the upper sections of the zinc symbol just to make it look about uh, that bit cooler make it look like a really interesting piece And there we are, just finally, final touches with the uh, brightest yellows and um, throwing a bit of uh, ivory into the mix as well just to work towards the edges and the ends of the, uh, the core transitions. So once I've done that, go back to the um, wall of purple and start coming in from underneath just to bring that purple up a bit, make it look uh, a bit brighter. Uh, and that's the cool thing with the airbrush because such thin layers you can just uh, go up and down all you want without obscuring too much detail so you can really have some fun with this sort of stuff just throwing a wall of purple in from the bottom just to brighten up that purpley colour and what you get is something really really interesting right at the end so now I'm throwing ivory onto the uh, upper sections of the bone armour so I've finished doing what I was doing on the staff and the bone is just getting finished off with a touch of ivory uh, just to make it look really really interesting and make the final highlights extra bright. The final Agrax Earth Shade which is again extra thin uh, into the bone armour uh, just to really bring it together now because I've uh, added a few extra highlights to it and uh, I'm also doing the same on the book as well it just makes it look a bit more interesting a really uh, nice sort of uh, color transition on there so onto the eye in the um, Zinchian symbol we're going for heavy dark green by you know, game colors it's an extra opaque it's pretty much the equivalent of Caliban green by GW, by GW and I'm getting a nice thin layer on that so I want a really gem like sort of uh, gem like eye in the centre of the staff. So now it is uh, black. Now the thing with doing um, gems is something I do wrong all the time. I often get it the wrong way around. 
is that dark sections go at the top, not the bottom. I do this wrong all the time, um, so it's, I actually made a concerted effort to remind myself to do this the right way around. So I did a sort of a, a crescent uh, in the top um, corner of the eyeball, um, keeping the paint um, wet at this point because I'm going to add uh, some sit green to the as a, as a crescent to the bottom corner of the eye and then I'm mixing it all back together with a touch of um, the heavy dark green just to bring it all together I'm also doing the uh, same colors on the flame now I could have done this with the airbrush um, but I chose not to, I decided I was going to do uh, the fire by hand and it's using the same sort of colours, it's heavy dark green towards um, the centre and towards the bottom got a decent layer of that initially onto the uh, onto the fire and getting the, um, then, then you start to build up the colours towards the bottom uh, with higher colours and darker colours towards the top, so the top is uh, black uh, this is Despair Black by Scale 75, but black's black, really. Uh, once you've got a decent one, just use that. And as you can see, the paint is still wet, uh, so I'm mixing it on the uh, fire itself. I'm just trying to uh, get them uh, colours to really work together. So, here we are, I've got a finished um, Gaunt Summoner. I'm um, not totally happy with the flesh work, I would have definitely done that a little bit different and I could possibly have gone a little bit more interesting on the fire as well. Overall, not a bad looking fig, really interesting to paint something with extra arms, um, something I've never done before. Uh, a couple of thank yous, uh, thank you to Joe Spearpoint, Rob Paints Models, Warren Brunsden and Ludwig Hofbauer. Uh, thank you for your support, you are awesome as always guys, and also if you want cheap toys, um, check out our affiliates link below, the um, Sheffield Outpost uh, give you discounts on pretty much anything you could want, uh, including paint, uh, so check, check them out as well. If you want to see more of our stuff, hit us up on uh, face Facebook, hit us up on uh, YouTube, or if you want early access to our videos, check us out on Patreon. It ain't expensive, it's only a dollar a month. And we will catch you in the next one, guys. Take care, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.